Good question. How are you guys handling Chuck Robert? Have you started yet, or will you wait till Tuesday morning? Um, I, uh, Joe and I are going through, and he's he's been talking with our staff, talking with his staff, and uh, so he's going through the process. Um, uh, whether or not anything is done is, is going to be up to him. When you get to today, is everything on to Carolina now? For us, yeah. Every, uh, from we put the we put the uh, preseason game to bed this morning. Uh, we'll have a good little. Uh, good practice of just uh, ones and ones, um, our offense versus our defense, and uh, and then from there, coaches' attention is all on Carolina. Did you get a chuckle at all when the random NFL schedule gave you Sam Darnold and the Panthers Week One? You know, I, yeah, it, NFL does have a sense of humor, but uh, <laughs> but we're going to eventually have to play them anyway, so it, it, it didn't. In the long run, it didn't matter. With uh, with Carl's injury, does that change anything? I know you're you know four three, but does that change how you approach trying to stop teams? Or it, it's going to go. It's game to game. What, whether Carl was there or not, um, every game is going to present a different opportunity opportunity to attack the protections that are presented to us. Um, you know, having him having him there obviously makes it much easier. But uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll we got to find other ways to do it. How does preparation change now that you're, you know, heading into the regular season? As far as in general with the team, is it more now game plan specific? You start up, or is it, you know, because in training camp there's a lot of general. Yeah, it's it's um, after after tomorrow, um, every practice will be geared towards uh, whoever it is we're playing. So the next time, you know, we have the off day on Tuesday, and then uh, which is also the cut down day. And when we get back together on those, every, every day from there on out, we'll be focused on the opponent. How, how much of a balance is, uh, when it comes to game plan for Carolina, will it be what you saw in preseason from Carolina um, based off what they did with Teddy Bridgewater last year? And then how much will you be even watch some of the film from Sam Darnold last year? It's a little bit of everything. There's, there's stuff that we put on tape that exposes us as a defense. There's... Um, the play caller, there's Carolina, there, there's a lot of different things. There's, uh, so we just, you know, the first game is always a crapshoot, but uh, um, you do the best you can to, to, to show guys what may or may not happen. And from there, it's a lot of rules ball, to be honest with you. Does it help that you have internal film of Sam Darnold? Um, well, we, it, it's good to have the internal part just to know him as a quarterback and, you know, but, but he's going into a completely different scheme with completely different rules with different personnel. So it's going to be, um, everyone's going to see a much different Sam Darnold. Robert, how, how important is um, CJ? I mean, I know CJ was always important, but you no know, call and you got two rookies next to him. How important is he now in this defense? He, he's uh, him, Marcus. I mean, they're all the veterans. They're very, very important just from a communication standpoint. We're, like I've said, we think we're, you know, with those two rookie linebackers and, and, uh, Michael Carter is going to get a lot of uh, play at, at nickel. It, it's a, there's a lot of um, communication needed, and especially at those spots, because there's a lot of communication that's needed already. And to have CJ is a very big deal. Have you made a decision at right tackle? If so, who are you going with to start? Uh, we're still working through it. So for you, uh, now that you're through training camp, is there a little bit more I don't know, excitement or, or something, because now you're gearing up for the real deal. Um, you know what, uh, I, cliche, but I, I, I've been taking all this in. So it's, uh, all of it's been exciting. Obviously the games are, are the games, but, uh, and it's gonna be, it's for real now or whatever you wanna call it. But you know, every, everything's had meaning though. It doesn't change the meaning. Maybe the game didn't count, but it, it mattered and uh, with preseason and so every single day matters and all of it's exciting and it's obviously we're going to be a little bit more amped up for week one but uh, but it doesn't change how much it matters. Did you change did that change for you quickly where remember you telling us how you said you know first practice you were standing outside waiting for the head coach did it change for you quickly that you know this is it this, this is me and this is where it's going to be? Uh, I think so I feel like we're in a, we, uh, over OTAs and training camp as, as a staff, you know, we're young staff too, so we've been able to get into a little bit of a rhythm. And there's, you know, I'm anticipating a lot of learning moments throughout this entire season. There's going to be, you know, we still haven't gotten as, we've gotten some great opportunities with regards to game management and reviews and timeouts and all that stuff. And uh, they're only, the difficulty level is only going to amplify uh, once the uh, uh, regular season hits. And uh, 
So, you know, there's still a lot, there's still going to be many more learning opportunities coming. So. What's been the biggest thing you've learned through the training camp? For me? As oh. Um, there's a lot of personalities. <laughs> and uh, just just having to deal with all of them, but uh, but again, we've got a tremendous staff and uh, and trusting them to do their jobs. But um, but overall, just just the amount of different things from a per, from personalities and, and management that has nothing to do with tape is probably the biggest thing I've learned. A couple of weeks ago, and you said about which meeting room you're in the most. Are, are you more in defense? Has anything changed from that standpoint? No, I'm. You know, today uh, today I spent time in the uh, offensive room. Um, I got a little convenient deal where you know I can watch them all from my office, so uh, I don't want people to coach differently just because I'm in there. So I, I, I get an opportunity to watch anybody I want. So today I spent a little bit more time with the offense, but as game planning goes, obviously I'm I'm going to lean towards uh, doing my best to help the defense get ready. This will be your first time with the head coach's say in the final roster, and do you feel like? These guys have given you a lot of close calls. Do you feel like you know who your 53 are, or do you feel like there's a lot of spots where it's pretty close? There, there's a lot of spots that are close, and uh, you know I know Joe is is grinding his butt off to to try to find the fine line that determines which ones make it and which ones don't. And um, you know as as we go through this, it, it these are the hardest parts. You know the whole, whole hardest part of camp because you know these guys have put everything on the line, and you just want them to be successful. So. Um, there's a lot of discussions to be made between now and tomorrow. Potentially, how much of an advantage is it of being so early in the way of claim order? Um, it's like a second draft, right? But uh, you know, the, it's it's still it's still a hard thing to do to be able to just claim somebody off another person's roster because of the amount of work that you put in with your guys. So. Um, more often than not, you trust the work that you've put in with, with your guys and you want to see them evolve, and especially with the investment that you've already made. So the wire is, is a great, you know, it's a, a great game to play, but it's, it's also it's a lot harder than people realize with regards to claiming people and letting go of somebody that you've invested so much in. What are some of the deciding factors you look for when there are those two players that are pretty neck and neck? Uh, it's, all, it's just the overall body of work and, and uh, I mean, it, it could be anything. You know, it could be: Do you want to go the younger guy? Do you want to stay with a veteran? Do you want to, um, you know, the character aspect of it? There's there's so many different variables that go into each scenario. To pinpoint it to one or two would be a disservice. You mentioned Carter and Nickel before. How much have you liked his growth? Um, we know he could find the ball collegiately. Uh, he seems to be a very physical presence in that position. Michael uh, and Goodry, both of them. Like I, I said it after the. Uh, after the game, we, we've got two legitimate starting nickels, and uh, and we've got to find a way to get them both on the football field. But uh, but Michael Michael's done a great job since he's walked in here. Um, he's been uh, for when did we get him fifth round, I believe it was. Uh, but he's that you can't ask for much more out of a, a fifth round guy. He's he's going to be he's going he's going to have a long life in the NFL for sure. What's next for Zach? You know now to he's got to keep progressing. Day. It's, it's the same thing. Nothing changes in terms of, uh, just like I mentioned from a coaching staff standpoint, he's going to learn so much as the year goes on. Every game is going to present a different challenge. He's going to get different looks. They're not going to be as vanilla. Uh, he's going to see more speed on the field uh, with regards to the defense. Um, uh, he's going to see every week just being a different scheme. And uh, so there, there's so many different things that are going to happen for him over the course of the year, and he's just got to find ways to absorb the information, find ways to get better, uh, take care of the football, and, and do his best to put us in position to win football games. What about the extra week? We'd normally have a fourth preseason game, but it's an extra week of just 53 guys instead of an extra week of 80 guys. Does that change anything, that it's two weeks to prepare with just no, 53? It, it, uh, it gets you to the week one opponent pretty, uh, a little bit, a couple days faster than you normally would. That's, that's about it. See uh, some injury updates on Pirine, Eccles, Mims, Joiner. If you have anything, yeah, to Eccles is good to go. Um, he'll, so I, um, I believe he'll be out there today. Pirine is still day to day. Mims is still day to day. Not worried about them for week one. And then Michael Carter, you said. Uh, Joiner. Joiner. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Joiner will be ready for week one. Carter. Yeah. He, no. He, yeah. They're all banged up, but he'll he'll be ready. <laughs> They'll all be good. Uh, any concern about week one? We're not concerned about his week one availability.
so the, for the most part, the uh, uh, everyone who's been banged up were uh, very, very optimistic about week one. Just real quick, uh, yeah. just to go back to Al's question when he asked about like the meetings. You said like you can look at the the other rooms from your office. Yeah. Is that is that something? I, I, I learned that from uh, from Papa Shanahan and Kyle. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the spy, but it's more of a an opportunity to just go in there and just watch and just stay connected and uh, without having because what you find is when when and talking to Papa and, and uh, Kyle when head coach is present in the room, um, coaches tend to coach differently because of you know they're trying not to show up guys and embarrass guys in front of the head coach. But uh, at the same time, you know you have those opportunities to record meetings. So when you do get people in the in the building, uh, new players, they have a chance to go watch installs. So not not all meetings are recorded, but the install ones, just so the players can look back and they can get caught up. Uh, so there's there's a process behind it, and I, I took a liking to it, and uh, so I got to credit those those two men. So thank you.